because someone has a major lead, so they've taken the cuts to the arm or a leg or whatever. And um, we've got Abe up here, and he's going to be our volunteer today. He's really good volunteer. Okay, so I'll just have to put the stuff down here. So um, let's just assume that Aidan has taken a cut to the back of the arm, he's run up against a bit of sheet iron or something, and he's cut the back of his arm. Okay, um, from the first aid's perspective, first thing uh, is consider your own safety. So you, if you've got gloves, definitely put them on. We're dealing with the bodily fluid here. Um, if, there's, if you've got nothing else, just give a place your hand over there, just hold that tight for me, you're going to be right. Yep. Just hold that tight. You got it? Yes. Yeah. Right, so <clears throat> what we've done is we've put pressure over the wound uh, and we're using his hand to do it. So again, we're reducing that risk to us by getting in contact with the blood because you know we don't know what he's been up to or who he is or, or whatever. So, so he's got his hand and he's holding the blood. And what happens when he does that is he's allowing uh, platelets within the blood to form a clot. And that's the whole idea of, uh, of uh, bandaging is when we do that, we try and form a clot. So he's got pressure on there, he's holding it tight. Go Yeah, you're right, man. Yeah. Okay. Right, now we've got all this other stuff down here. Now, so the first thing we've got is, these are just little training of bandages, but we're going to use them as a pad. And, and what these pads do, when the same with the band-aid, is just as a pad, it allows the blood to seep into it and allows the formation of that clot. Okay? So, just chuck that down there. So we've got this pad, okay, just when you're ready, just release your hand, down, slide down, hold that there. Again, if we have nothing else, this may be all that we can do. Now I've got a pad there and whatever. The problem is that we have this essential curiosity, okay? And what we tend to do is this. Just remove your hand, right? We do this sort of thing. Has it stopped bleeding yet? No, no, it hasn't stopped. Right, wait another few minutes. What about now? No, oh, God, it's still bleeding. Right. So every time we do that, we're removing the clot, okay? So whatever you do, don't, don't let the curiosity get better. Just hold it there for me. Got it? Yeah. Okay. We're fortunate we've got some bandages here, so we'll just bandage it. Just it normally rip it off quite easily. Okay. So we've got our bandage here. Okay. Um, these little clips don't use them. They're, they're good to holding the bandages in the package, but they're pretty ordinary when it comes to actually holding the bandage to somebody. Um, so we'll just chuck those down there. Okay. <coughs> Bandaging. Uh, this bit here, the round bit, we refer to that as the drum. I don't know if that's what it's really called, but that's what it was when I did my training. We call that the drum. And this bit down here, the tail. Okay. Um, not really a pet hate of mine, but yes it is. The tail should go against the skin. So that way. Okay? Because it's a roller bandage. It just helps it naturally roll. Okay. Now, when you put on your bandage, we start at the lower end of the limb, or, or wherever it is that we're trying to bandage. Okay, we do a couple of laps, just to secure it in place. Okay, and then we generally make our way up, up the limb. Um, you do cross it over, and some of them, like this one, you'll see a striped, and that just gives you an indication of where the next overlap should be. Um, but in an emergency, if there's no stripes, don't waste time trying to get the pressure right. Just get, get the bandage on there. Okay, so this guy, wait, just wait this one on. Couple of laps again. When you get to that point, you can cut it off, tape it in place, or whatever. But what I'm going to do is just loop it back around on itself and tuck it in, just make a little pocket like that. You're right? Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Then what we would do is we might split it up and might elevate it or whatever. Okay. So we've got that first one. Excellent. Okay. What do you think we do if it bleeds through? Put another one on. Yep, we whack another one on, absolutely. If this bleeds through, we do exactly the same. We don't take this down, we just put another bandage over the top. Put another pad over the top. So we've got this one here. Okay, can you just hold it there for me? This one. So 
now, <coughs> eight years from now, I'm a Popeye sailor, it's just getting bigger and bigger. Okay, well, again, I'll just tuck that in. But do it normally again, cut it, tape it, or whatever. Uh, don't use those clips. So we've got this second bandage on, okay? You feeling alright? We've got two bandages on, it's yeah. under control, okay? We've left this fingers exposed, or, or if it was a leg, we'd leave this toes exposed, and we check the circulation, okay? You just pinch, pinch the nails like that, it will blanch white. Um, if it takes longer than two seconds, then compare it against the normal hand, okay? If it takes longer than two seconds, your bandage could be too tight. Loosen it off, but don't remove it. Again, we're trying to make sure that this clot stays in place. Um, have a look at the colour in general. Ask them if they're feeling any pins and needles and get them to tell you what they do. Okay, so we're just checking circulation, check the temperature, all those sorts of things. Okay, now we've got two bandages on. What do we do if that is not sufficient? What do you think we do? Do we put a third bandage on? Yep. Yeah. No, we don't. <laughs> Um, what we do if, we, if, um, if uh, this one bleeds through is we apply pressure to the artery that feeds that limb. Okay, so um, arms are pretty simple. The arteries run either through the core of your body, which you won't have to worry about if you're dealing with a bleed um, externally, um, or they run down on the inner edge of your limbs, so the inside of your arm or down through your thigh. Um, and what we do is we apply pressure to those. <clears throat> okay, so with an arm, it's not too bad. You can actually almost grab it like that and hold it like that, that's one way of doing it. Or you can get something like um, another roll of bandage, tuck it up against that, that artery, so another roll of bandage or a ball or something, something with a bit of mass, and again, um, bind that into place as well. Not technically a tourniquet, but it's very close. We shouldn't be using tourniquet when it's all else fails, okay? But we apply that pressure there <coughs> to the artery, um, and we, <coughs> again, monitor the blood, the bleeding, to make sure that it has down. If it is a leg, they have, you've got quite a large artery there. It's a uh, femoral artery that runs down through here. Um, it's about so big, and if that's said, um, you've got to act very, very quickly because you can bleed out very, very quickly. Um, the sort of weight that you're looking at will be quite severe. Uh, I have heard stories of a guy who had a femoral bleed. Um, the nurse who had applied pressure to that used her entire body. Their entire body weight basically applied, applied pressure to a femoral artery. So just be aware that whilst placing a bandage here on the arm is great, it will work, um, you really need to think uh, quite seriously about what you're going to do for a femoral bleed. Where do you have to apply pressure for the femoral? Um, it's actually down here on the inner side of the limb, like that, and I'm not going to embarrass him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, you can, you, essentially again, uh, you can use both hands, but it would take a lot of weight. Um, there is another method which I won't talk about, but, um, but the army do use it where they shall talk about it. They actually use their knee uh, into the groin, but they, they're trained to do that and not going to do that on this course. Okay, any other questions? Yes, if we're out in the field and we haven't got the bandages, the uh, most important thing is to use something to actually apply the pressure. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, so we apply the pressure. So if you haven't got bandages, um, you know, you do have to get creative, uh, you know, the sleeves of your shirts or, or whatever. Um, whatever you can find to actually keep that panel in place. But as I said before, you know, if all you've got is nothing at all, just get them to apply pressure with their hand. Um, if you've got a rag, get them to apply pressure to that. Um, you know, build it up, build it up as you go.